Markus Grönholm and he's gonna talk about the terahertz imaging as the ma mankind's new eyeballs. Thank you. And um, yeah, the uh, there's been lots of talks about uh, the uh, innovations and future technologies. And let me ex let me give you an example what we future will keep give you. This is actually a real working prototype. So. So, what's terahertz radiation? Terahertz radiation is just a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that lies between the microwaves and the infrared. It's from 0.3 millimeters to 3 millimeters in wavelength. It's usually called the submillimeter range or far infrared. Just like the infrared, thermal uh, the terahertz radiation is just normally thermal radiation, something that uh, is usually called the black body radiation. Every object emits it. Uh, the sun, a hot glowing iron bar, your own body. The temperature of the object actually, uh, it's, it's the intensity of the emissions is dependent on the temperature. So why to use terahertz? With terahertz we get pen better penetration through materials than infrared. We, get, we can see through solid objects. And we achieve better resolution than microwaves, that means that we can see smaller details um, with reasonably sized optics. Terahertz radiation can easily penetrate like stuff like plastic. Uh, a plastic bucket that usually holds water is totally transparent in these frequencies. We can see through dry wood, clothes. Most of the clothing materials like cotton and polyester are almost transparent in these frequencies. Then we can see through cardboard, paper, etc. So, what's the problem? Why don't we use it already? The problem is that there's no cheap and easy solution for either uh, generating it or detecting it. All the solutions that we currently have are both expensive and complex. This is due to the fact that terahertz regime lies where the radio waves meet the optics, so neither of the approaches works well there. So that's why there's a thing called the technological terahertz gap which is the place where uh, the thing it says that, that there's we have no where there's lots of room for new innovations new technologies and we also do need those to make these kind of devices feasible to use so why bother security we can use this in security applications like uh, detecting hidden weapons underneath your clothes at security checkpoints and detecting explosives from a distance then military applications, for example, preventing brownouts. Brownout is a situation where a landing helicopter uh, creates a vortex that rises dust from the ground, uh, blocking the visibility and greatly increasing the uh, probability of a crash landing. This is actually a real problem in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Well, we can use terahertz waves to see through the dust and guarantee a safer landing. Then in medicine, we can use okay <laughs> okay if I can just continue it's it's in in medicine it's used for uh, diagnostics of different skin diseases uh, like skin cancer uh, the unhealthy and healthy skin look very different when viewed in terahertz regime And in industry, we can use this as uh, a tool for quality control for goods and products. Does it work already? Okay, fine. Uh, uh, for example, we can look for fractures uh, and other defects on non-metallic objects. Okay, and then astronomy, my main field uh, study, we can use this for studying the creation of the universe, the Big Bang, and the cosmic microwave background. So, let's take a closer look on a particular use case. Uh, the security screening. Uh, this is why, because the terrorism is a constant topic on the news and it, all this security screening stuff has come up. And the problem is, how to detect non-metallic objects, like ceramic knives that you can buy online? Of course, the metal detector is pretty useless against non-metallic objects, so we need a new kind of detector. And it should be safe also, 
Nobody likes an extra dose of ionizing radiation, like X-rays. Uh, terahertz radiation is safe. It's harmless. You all emit it all the time, so... Well, the two main approaches how to do terahertz imaging. First one is active. There the device itself sends uh, terahertz waves to the object and receives the echoes, the reflected light from the object. So basically it's just a radar. Uh, because of the low power of current terahertz sources, all the active devices are more or less portal-like, so they look pretty much the same as the metal detector gates that you have at airports or in Moscow train station. Uh, with active systems you can get very good resolution, you can see very small details in very fine manner, but this actually is also a drawback, because it raises some privacy issues. People usually don't like that other people peek through their clothes in very high detail, so having a good resolution is also a drawback. So, we have this second approach, which is called the passive one. The passive terahertz camera works just like your normal digital camera, it just receives the radiation. Uh, in this case, your body's own thermal emissions, so the device doesn't send anything. This is also a good thing, because now we can move the camera away from the target, from like 5 to 10 meters away. Well, we have to cope with the uh, uh, longer distance with um, higher sensitivity. This is uh, usually done with cryogenics, so we have to cool the device down and uh, use superconducting detectors. Uh, usually some sort of superconducting bolometer or another thermal detector. And the thing is, there's no privacy issues with this one, because our brains are not adapted to interpret or to look through thermal images, and if one looks on those images, people seem like flat figures with no particular details. Just you see the anomalies like the gun or, or a fracture in an in a object or something, so you don't see like uh, uh, other body shapes. Some uh, notable de uh, developers around the world are National Institute of Standards and Technology, located at Boulder, Colorado, in the USA, Jena from Germany, and VTT from Finland. So, to g keep this pretty short, uh, thank you. The I think the terahertz regime is the final frontier of the electromagnetic spectrum. There's lots and lots of things to learn and to discover and to see. This is also, because of the technological terahertz gap, there's lots and lots of emerging technologies, new innovations, new startups. Uh, this has spawned a huge amount of new technology and industry to cope with the, uh, like the security industry. Uh, then, what, the, what it's my favorite thing about this uh, area is that it enables us to see new things and new phenomenon. And even better, we can see the old ones in, in a new way and in a new light.